Hey everyone, David here. Just thought I'd do a, a quick video on just reporting on a the Dallas Card Show that I went to on Saturday. I thought about writing this out, but I thought maybe a video would be better. Um, also, uh, we'll include just a couple of pictures and videos that I took uh, at the event too. So it was um, DallasCardShow.com is the website. Uh, Kyle Robinson is the promoter. He's uh, really been in the industry for a long time but it was in Allen Texas and I went to the show same location same promoter uh, back in August and it was a big show then uh, Saturday was even bigger uh, it was uh, published that there were a little more than 400 tables uh, in total and I would definitely say that there was there was at least 400 tables there so I would say it was about maybe 10 to 15 percent bigger in terms of just the number of tables and vendors than the August show. But I just want to cover a little bit of things that I saw walking around the show. Um, I was there for about four and a half hours. Um, a lot of people there. Um, yes, everyone was, was wearing a mask um, unless they were kind of by themselves eating something. But a really big show, um, really good variety of cards. Um, mostly sports. There was a little bit of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon stuff. There was one kind of detached room that had a lot of uh, comic books and and um, some toys and things like that there, but mostly straight up sports cards. Obviously a lot of baseball, basketball, football, um, a little bit of hockey, but I was really interested to go to this show because it's mid-November and uh, really thought that uh, early November still, I uh, thought there'd be uh, a lot of football stuff there. And there was a good amount. Uh, Bob Lilly was signing there. Drew Pearson was signing there on Saturday. So overall, really cool show. One of the biggest shows that I've been to outside of the National Sports Collectors Convention, uh, which is just massive. But um, great job by Kyle promoting it. Um, overall, you know, noticed a lot of modern uh graded cards so really high you know graded obviously for modern cards it's going to have a lot of nines and tens uh, mint to gem mint but a lot of graded stuff um on the baseball side you know deep, good amount of mike trout obviously still super hot um football decent decent amount of of, of vintage cards which is what i was primarily uh there for but um I was kind of hoping to see more 2020 cards. There was definitely, you know, a decent amount of Prism draft picks, Contenders draft picks, um, Donruss. Now that that's out, there was there was a good amount of Donruss cards there, and and a lot of Donruss parallels. Um, vintage wise, for football, um, there was one vendor that had uh, from Iowa that had a really impressive uh, display, uh, several cases of all graded key vintage cards um, from all sports. Um, I picked up a, a 1948 Leaf Bobby Lane rookie card that I've been wanting, that I've had my eye on for a while. The guy had an SGC for and a PSA for. I opted for the SGC. Both were at the exact same price. I thought the SGC looked better. The back of the card was definitely better, which is really hard to find uh, for the for the 48 leaf. So really happy with that card. I also bought uh, a 79 tops Earl Campbell from the same guy, and he knocked 30 bucks off of the off of the deal, which was which was a really good deal. So actually ended up essentially getting the Earl Campbell for a lot less than what it goes for. Um, online. So that was a BVG-8. Also picked up a PSA 7 Mel Renfro rookie card, 1965 uh, Philadelphia uh, Hall of Fame defensive back for the Cowboys. I'm, I'm putting together um, a, a collection of key vintage Dallas Cowboy rookie cards in the highest grade that I can afford. <laughs> but that one I snagged for $75, which which I thought was a great deal. I've seen some go online for, for about 120 so really happy with that one. Previously to that one, I picked up a Mel Renfro uh, raw version uh, for like 30 So I'm um, not sure if I'm going to keep that one or just try to sell that and put that money toward the you know, toward the PSA 7, but great looking PSA 7. And then I picked up a 2010 Exquisite Collection Colt McCoy um, in the Longhorns uniform with the patch and autograph. I've been, been wanting that one for a while. So I think that was the only modern card I bought. 
I bought, I bought a few Devin Duvernay uh, mosaic cards uh, just because he's a Longhorn player, and I'm trying to trying to get as much uh, of him as I can, and he's pretty cheap right now. Um, what else? Um, any other vintage? Not a lot of sets. Um, not a lot of vintage sets. I think some people said they had some sets, but they didn't have them with them. Um, one good thing about a show is that most people are willing to deal. Um, if you ask anybody to come down a little bit on d displayed prices, they usually will. Most people are willing to negotiate. What I usually find is that no matter what the sticker price is, most people are willing to give you a 10% discount at least. Now, if you buy multiple cards for them or some higher dollar ones, they may get, they may knock off even more. Um, so consider that too um, if if you're going to shows, if you have any local shows in your area. A show like this, the, the Dallas show that I went to, it would be worth driving two or three hours. Um, it, it's that big with that much inventory and selection. It was a th three day show, really kind of two and a half days, Friday afternoon, all day Saturday, and then um, most of the day on Sunday. I went uh, Saturday, you know, Saturday uh, early afternoon so I think I got there about 12 but um, that was probably prime time for the whole three days as well so it was probably the most packed um, one advantage of going early is that you're gonna have the best selection especially if you're looking for some you know really hot cards that a lot of other people are, are trying to grab too an advantage of going later is that the vendors are wanting to get rid of their stuff They're, most of them are there to sell uh, they're wanting to sell their inventory and whatever they brought, they're, they're, they're wanting to get rid of. So you might end up getting an even better deal um, with what's left uh, uh, you know, right before the show closes. Um, a lot of the vendors there were, were willing to buy, and a lot of them had the ones that were looking to buy had, a, had some sort of sheet or sign uh, listing uh, the, the players that they, that they were actively buying. Uh, so, um, and some of them are willing to trade with you if you wanted to, if if you have you know something that's pretty pretty desirable and you wanted to trade it in for um, just a straight up value trade for something they have, they'll do it. Um, you know whether it's cards and some cash. Uh, definitely recommend bringing cash. It's just a lot easier. Um, you know, obviously you uh, you know whether they're including the tax or that's up to them <laughs> right so uh, a lot of times um, the price that you see listed if, if a card is is listed there for a hundred bucks you or it's just a hundred bucks so um, obviously uh, you can still use PayPal Venmo you know all, all the kind of typical um, third-party services and a lot of a lot of vendors will have their like like have their PayPal ID right there at their table or some of them use like a QR code with a sign uh, put it on a sign so that you can just use your phone and scan it and um, you can uh, transfer the money right there in front of them and they confirm it on their phone or their you know tablet or whatever they're using and then you're good to go so that's a that's another easy way to do it um, service there was kind of was kind of spotty at times so that, that's something to, to consider too just just a few tips um and obviously you know one of the big advantages of going to a show especially a big show like that is that all the cards are right there in front of you you know you get to see them right there you get to inspect them firsthand front back corner um, if you're looking for some vintage cards if, if condition is a big issue uh, if you're looking at raw and graded cards, uh, you know most people are totally willing to let you take a look at you know whatever you need. Um, you can even bring a magnifying glass or a loop if 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 it's that important to you. Um, so you know net, did not run into any roadblocks whatsoever. Vast majority of people are super friendly. Um, it was busy, so it 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 was it was hard to just talk you know, to, to some people that that's another big advantage of going to shows is just meeting other collectors, meeting dealers, meeting vendors, and just, um, you know, even if they don't have what you're looking for right now, they may be able to help you find it. You know, they may say, Hey, I, I don't have one, but I know, you know, so-and-so who does. So that's a big, that's a big, 
advantage to going to shows is just meeting other people and other collectors, picking up some business cards, uh, sharing your contact information with other people that you run into, and and helping each other, right? Gr kind of grow a network, which is a big, you know, big deal with some of the Facebook groups and and meeting other collectors. Um, not a whole lot of unopened boxes there. There were some, you know, some of the new stuff, some of the older stuff, especially some of the, you know, like 2017 football with, with Patrick Mahomes cards there. Um, it's crazy how high the secondary market prices have gotten for those. I, I just don't deal in those a lot. I, I pretty much just stick to the individual cards that I'm looking for. Um, other things I kind of saw, a lot of boxes, uh, low dollar cards. So if you like thumbing through a lot of cards and just looking for some stuff that pops out at you for 2 to $5, do it. I, I kind of like that. I'm, I'm looking for Longhorns uh, pl players and cards that that I could easily, you know, be $2, $3. And I'll gladly pay them and add them to my collection. Um, and it's fun just to kind of thumb through there. And, you know, sometimes you sometimes you find some some good stuff. And, and that's also another advantage of going to a show is that you don't have to pay for shipping. If you do buy a lot of individual cards that are 2 to $5 and shipping is 3 to $4, well, you've doubled your, your, your price just because of the shipping. You don't have to worry about that at a show. You can, you know, those Devin DuVernay cards, I think I got four mosaic parallels for like $10 total. You know, obviously didn't have to pay any shipping, so, so that was cool. Um, bring a bag. If, if if you're bringing some of your own cards, um, bring a case. If they're higher dollar, uh, make sure you protect them. Uh, I just kind of had a drawstring bag because I, I didn't bring a whole lot of stuff to trade or sell. And I actually didn't end up, I, I didn't sell anything. I, I'm, I, I just bought, but I always like to bring, you know, whatever my budget is, I like to bring at least... Uh, an amount of cards that I'm willing to part with that equal half of my budget or up to 100% of my budget. That way um, I can trade, you know, do a value trade, or I know that I can maybe sell those there or sell them after the show. Um, if I, you know, just to kind of keep keep the numbers <laughs> in uh, in check because it's easy to... Uh, it's easy to kind of get excited and bite off more than you can chew. Um, I almost bought a 57 Tops Johnny Unitas uh, graded there as well. Those are uh, are going up uh, significantly. Um, I almost bought uh, a four, but I, I really, really want to want to hold off for at least a, um, a PSA or SGC five or BVG five. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions about going to shows, um, what you might expect at a, at a pretty big show like that, just drop drop your uh, comments or questions below. And then also, if you haven't checked out the online course yet, definitely do. We'll leave a link uh, somewhere around here at the bottom of the video somewhere. Just look around. Um, it's over. It's about seven hours of of lessons teaching hobby basics. Uh, collecting or investing in sports cards. It's perfect if you're just getting started in the hobby or if you've been gone for a long time and you need to kind of figure out like, where do I start? I'm, I'm confused about this stuff. We cover, um, we cover pretty much everything from hobby terms to what makes a card valuable, how to search online, how to sell online, just different tips for that, how to protect your collection, um, what the, all the different parallels mean, why some cards sell for 10 bucks when a parallel of that card sells for five hundred dollars, but um, it's it's an it's an awesome course. Would love feedback on it, but uh, definitely go check it out and uh, just watch some of the preview videos. Uh, definitely appreciate it. And if you have any other ideas for any other videos or tips, uh, let me know. Would love to uh, would love to put it out there and uh, help you uh, help you guys build your collection. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.